now that you have the basic understanding of the common big O notation to describe the complexity of an algorithm, we can now investigate on the different data structures and its associated processes to manipulate data. Even in real life situations, most people want to organize things around them. Just consider a scenario at your home. Why do you need a closet? A dish rack, a shoe rack, a filing cabinet, and all other containers you might think for all your stuff. Right, to organize your things. But why? For most people, having their things organized the way they want it make them more efficient in accomplishing their daily task. If you know exactly the location of the specific thing that you want, then you don't have to look for it. You go directly and get it. And this is not different from your computer system. That's why an array data structure is very useful in this kind of scenario. You can collect items of similar type and access it directly if you know the index of that item. This gives us time complexity of O1, which is constant. Since I already know the specific index of the item that I want, I can access it always at the same speed, regardless of the container size. But what if you don't know the exact index of the item in your array, but you want to get it? Then you have to search for it. In an array data structure, this is called linear search, and this is considered to be one of the basic searching algorithms. If you have a collection of items to do a linear search, you have to check for the items one by one, starting from the first item until you find what you're looking for. If you're lucky, the first item in the element is already what you want. Then you don't have to check for the rest of the item inside the container. The complexity for this is O1, and this is the best case scenario for an array. But when looking at the complexity of an algorithm, we always consider the worst case scenario, the worst runtime execution for this matter, meaning, in linear search, if you are not that lucky, perhaps the item you are looking for might be located at the end of the array, or perhaps not at all. And for that, the worst case scenario is ON, linear time complexity. The runtime execution grows in proportion to the size of the container. Let's check it in code. I'll declare an array and set its size to 5. I'll display a console message, enter, and then concatenate it with array size followed by numbers. Using a for loop, I'll iterate five times and ask the user to enter five numbers and store it to each array cell consecutively. Outside this loop, I'll ask the user to enter for an item to be searched. And I need to declare the variable on top to hold the value that the user wanted to search. Now, to perform the linear searching algorithm, I'll implement it using for loop, but if you want, you can implement it using any looping structure that you are comfortable with. Inside the loop, I'll check each item of the array if it is equal to the search item that the user is looking for. And if there's a match, I'll display a message, item was found. Let's check the output. I'll type in some values, and I'm going to enter the item that I want to search, say 34, and there I go. Item was found. Let's run it again. Now, I'll enter a different set of values, and I'll search for 10, which is not in the list. But it did not give us any message that the item was not found. To implement this behavior, let's go back to our code, and I'll declare a new Boolean variable and initialize it to false. And once an item is found anywhere in my array, I'll set its value to true and put a break statement at the end of the if block. This is to immediately get out of the loop once the item is found. And then outside the loop, I'll test this variable if it doesn't exist. I'll display the message, sorry, then the search item doesn't exist. Once again, let's check the output. I'll enter some number and search for 13 and the item was found. Test it again one more time. Now I'll enter an item that doesn't exist and I'll get a message, sorry, 100 doesn't exist. That's it. You have a very simple linear search. Good if you have a small collection of items, but if you have a collection that is huge, then linear search is not that very efficient. Let me add a simple modification just to add a color to our display. 
though it's not part of linear searching algorithm, just for our program to have a nice interface. Now, notice that the input numbers turn green, and I have not found message in red. Test it again, and if the item is found, the message is colored yellow. Now, it's your time to code.